Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and this is to answer a viewer's question about creating formulas that allow for multiple holes along object that when we change the size of the object so that's changed the length We've got 150 here now I'm going to change this to 100 then you'll see that the number of holes change as well so we've got four along there and double click that come back in and set this to something like 80 you can see now we've got three so these holes are keeping in proportion with the length of this part and this is all done via formulas we're in the part design and what I'm going to show you is how I create this part and how I use linear pattern I'm using something called a linear pattern in there to create those holes and hook up the formulas if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So we're in FreeCAD. We're going to start a new document and I'm going to come over to the part design and I'm going to create a very simple sketch in here so I'm going to create a body create a sketch place it on the XY plane and hit OK we're just going to do a rectangle in here and we're going to set the length of the top line using the length constraint I'm going to set that one to 100 millimeters but I'm also going to name the actual constraint as well so I'm going to call this something like side length Remember the casing matters as well. So when we come to take this length and use it in our formula, then this will matter. Hit OK. I'm just going to set the height as well. So like 15 millimeters. And we're going to take this point and this point and the center point. So point, point, and then center. The last one is the one you're going to center over. We're going to do a symmetrical constraint against that. So that's symmetrical constraint against the center. We've now got our length all set up, ready to go. That's the first part. I'm going to pad this. I'm going to give it something like five millimeter pad in there. I hit enter and it's come out of there. So we've got this now, I'm going to sketch upon this face. So I'm going to click on this face. I'm going to add a sketch. Now I'm just going to add one single hole in here. So I'm creating a circle. I'm going to attach it to this line like so. I'm going to come in and I'm going to set some diameter on here. This can be whatever diameter you want. We can use a radius in there. I'm going to set this one to five millimeters. And also I'm going to import this edge here using the import geometry here and click on that point at the top. And I'm just going to set, because we constrained it to this line, I'm going to select that point and that point and just set a length in here. Now we can set this something like 10 millimeters. We'll take this offset. So this is the offset from the left. Double click it. And we're going to name that, name that offset because we're going to use that in our formula. So we've got those two set, offset and the side length. Must remember what sketches they are on. So one's in this sketch here in the pad and one's in this sketch here. We're going to pocket this one. So come up to the pocket and it's got five millimeters. So we just go up to two first. I know that's five millimeters there. So let's go out to the first face it'll find, which is this bottom face here. That's gone all the way through. We now can make something called a linear pattern. So if I click on that pocket and come up to this icon here, create a linear pattern, it's an additive feature, part design, and it should be down in apply pattern and linear pattern and we can set a linear pattern along this here. So we've got a length and the occurrences. So if I up these occurrences, you can see these occurrences are appearing. And this length we can change to offset this. As you can see, as I move this up, it will offset that length.
like so. Just pressing the page up and page down, or you can use your middle scroll wheel, depending on how you've got your mouse control set up. So we're going to just going to put three occurrences in here. We're going to control this via formula. And we'll come up and hit OK. So we've got our linear pattern in there. And now we can come into the actual linear pattern data and control the occurrences and control the length. So these are the important things that we need to control. First of all, we're going to tackle the length. So if we come into this icon here, we're allowed to put at least a formula in here. So this allows us to place the formula in. And the formula we want is our sketch.constraint side length, which was our first sketch, which is the length of this line here and then minus the constraint offset and times that by two. So that's how far this hole is offset from this side. Obviously we need to offset back as well. As you can see, it's coming up, no attribute offset there. So we must be careful. If I double click that sketch, let's have a look at that offset. This one here, and we've got a lowercase s. So watch out for casing. So I'm going to uppercase that S. Okay, close that. Come back into our linear pattern. Look at the length. Use the formula. Place the formula back in there. And you see we've got 80 millimeters there. Hit OK and click off. You can see they are now along there evenly spaced. And no matter how many we've placed in here, let's place six in here, we can see they're evenly spaced. Now the occurrence is basically a percentage or a division between these two. And again, we will use the length, so sketch, and then type in constraints, and dot side length. I'm saying the, the millimeter will be discarded because it's a millimeter. And then just divide that by how many you want. So our length is 100. If we only wanted two in there, we have to divide that by 50. So for this one, I'm going to say, let's go for 25. And that will mean that will place four in there. So if we change this now, our length. So there's our length there. And if we come into our original sketch and change this now to something like 150 then that will all recalculate. So we go close. We can see how they are being placed along there. The other thing that I just did was come in here and did some filleting along these edges here. So you can fill it this linear pattern if you so desire. And I just control clicked all these edges like so. And basically added a fillet if you wanted to do the same as what I did. And we brought this fillet right up not too far and hit OK. So we've got a linear pattern in there that changes depending on our sketch length. This one here. So we get a nice number of evenly placed holes in there. And also remember we've got the offset as well so we can change this offset. So I've got a 10 millimeter offset in there. So if I want to put 15 millimeters in there, I can hit OK and hit close. And those offsets will be taken care of as well. So that's a quick video of how to do the linear pattern using the formula and looking at sketch length, the length of this side and the offset and using those together in those two formulas. So this one here for the length sketch.constraint.side length, so that was the sketch in the pad, and sketch 001.constraint.offset times by two, because we have to offset one hole from the right-hand side and one hole from the left-hand side. And remembering to name the length in our sketch. Case matters, so side length, capital S, capital L in there, and also name the offset. So this one here, the offset here, and these are a bit all over the place. Let's just bring these out a bit. So that's our diameter 
that hole there and our offset is on this one I just did offset capital O capital S on there and close and that creates that shape there with that formula and places those holes at an even distance and increases the number of holes depending on the length of the object so I hope that helps hope that answers the question and I hope to see you soon if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.